Yo, and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector. It is, well, it's Wednesday, and it's one of those days outside where it's rainy and yucky and dreary, so I just thought I'd shoot a video. And I'm gonna do a video today uh, to a couple, for a couple things. The first one is I am super stoked for this weekend because for the first time in a, I don't know, they're saying about 20 years, we're having a major card show here. We have a couple of local card shows here in the area, but Dallas-Fort Worth is a huge area, and uh, where they have them up in North Dallas is like literally the other side of the world for me. So I never go to them, and, and they're only 20, 30, 40 tables, so they're just not, for me, worth it uh, to drive that far. But this show that's coming up this weekend, the Texas Sports Card Show, is gonna have 200 tables. Uh, it's up at the Star Center up in Frisco, which is north of Dallas, and I'm, really really excited to go i'm going to be there all day saturday so i'm going to go check that out really excited about that but the main reason for this video is to do a contest response for a youtuber that i recently found uh, via other people recommending his channel and his name is chris and his channel name is vintage card collector or i'm sorry modern vintage collector sorry about that modern vintage collector and he's reached 100 subs and so he's doing a contest where he wants us to do a video response where we describe our greatest hobby regret and for me it's pretty easy sorry if you hear norman squeaking in the background but uh for me it's a pretty easy story and i think i've told this story before but i'm going to tell it again in greater detail maybe this time than i have before but when i was a kid uh, i started collecting in 1981 so i was eight years old or so back then. I was born in 1973. And I would just buy packs. My parents would just buy me packs uh, of cards at the, you know, five and dime store kind of thing, if that tells you how old I am. But that wasn't, you know, I just was a very novice collector. And then when I was 12 years old or so, so 1985-ish, I heard about a neighbor down the street that had a bunch of cards that he was selling. And so I can't remember how much money my mom gave me. It might have been 10 bucks, maybe 20 bucks. I can't remember exactly. I was 12 years old. But whatever it was, it was a lot. We were a family, we were a normal mid -class, middle class family. But for my parents to give me any money to spend for cards like that was like, you know, was, was a big deal for our family. And so whatever my mom gave me, $10, $20, I can't remember. It certainly wasn't more than $20, if I remember right. I walked down to this guy's house down the road. Back then, you could walk to people's houses. And uh, he had literally a trash bag, big black trash bag full of cards. And, I mean, one of the big ones that literally, they were just all in there raw. And back then, you know, condition was certainly not on the forefront of people's mind, taking care of them, etc. Uh, it wasn't that people didn't do that in the hobby. It just wasn't the norm. There was no PSA yet. None of that stuff existed. And so literally just stuffed in this trash bag are all these cards. And I remember distinctly, I don't remember a whole lot of, I don't have a whole lot of vivid memories from, from my childhood for no other reason than I just have a bad memory. But I'm telling you, I remember this pretty, you know, specifically about the circumstances involving this story. So he says, well, I said, here's my money. Again, whatever the amount was, the denomination was, and uh, he let me pick out a few cards. And I ended up buying three cards from this guy. And all the cards were 67, 68, 69 tops. I do remember that very specifically. Uh, there were bear, or, uh, bench rookies and Nolan Ryan rookies and uh, Tom Seaver and Rod Carews and all these things that I really just didn't know a whole lot about back then. I mean, I'm 12 years old. This is 1985. And so there were a few card, three cards that I picked out that I knew, and I was really excited to buy them. Uh, a couple of them I've gotten slabbed since then just to protect them. Uh, but the other one I did not. The first card I'll show is uh, this one. And this is a 1967 Topps Pete Rose that I got from him. You can see it's in, you know, it's not in terrible shape, but uh, there's no creases in it or anything like that. The corners are certainly 
dinged up pretty good. But remember, this is 1985, so Pete Rose had just wrote and re broken the all-time hits record by Ty Cobb. And so I thought, man, this guy's a surefire Hall of Famer. This was kind of the oldest Rose that was in the bunch that I could find as I was thumbing or you know sifting through these cards, <laughs> rummaging through these cards. Talk about rummage. That's like the definition of rummage is what I was doing back then. And so I picked up this Pete Rose from the guy. The second card I got was this one right here that is now slabbed. It is a 1969 Topps Hank Aaron. It came back a three, which honestly, if you told me all the cards that were in this giant trash bag were threes and fours, and I would totally believe it. So this one came back a three, but it, the card holds such a special memory to me that you know I'll never get rid of it. But I got that Hank Aaron because I knew Hank Aaron back then, even as a 12 year old in 1985. Remember for my hobby as a, as a kid, literally at that age, I was reading the baseball card or the baseball encyclopedia. That was what I did at night. I would just memorize statistics and who were, who were the top 10 home run hitters of all time and RBI guys and MVPs and all that stuff. That was, I was such a nerd. I still am a nerd, but that, I, would, I did that for fun. That's what I enjoyed doing and reading books about baseball and, you know, great feats of the old time players, which is probably what really inspired me and, and why I today have such a love for the history of the game, the Hall of Famers. I don't, I don't, I love the modern game. I mean, I watch baseball every day. It's just, you know, I have a huge appreciation and love for the history of the game, which is why this contest is really good because all of Chris's channel uh, his whole channel is is a lot of great stories from old time baseball and behind the photos, and he does a lot of really cool stuff on his channel, uh, Modern Vintage Collector, Collector, which I'll put a link down below to his channel. You should definitely check it out. And then the last card that I got was a name that, of course, even as a 12-year-old, I was intimately familiar with, and that was Mickey Mantle. And so I picked up this 1968 Topps Mickey Mantle from him. I immediately put it in whatever the equivalent of a mag was back then it was back then you would just literally have two pieces of plastic with screws on four corners that you would put the card in and, and it those are terrible now like we know now those aren't great ways to store cards long term but i did with this one but it came out a three and a half which is you know not terrible uh again it's it's a mickey mantle so it was my first mickey mantle and so i'll never forget buying those three cards. And so you're saying, well, what's your regret then? <laughs> what, where's the sad part of this story? And the sad part of the story is I was 12 years old. I had no money, but man, today, if I would literally buy the whole bag and, and I wish I could go back to that kid and hand him, you know, go back in a time machine and hand him a, a wad of cash to buy as many cards as he could and tell, Hey, whisper in his ear, Hey, here's what you go get all these that you can find. And get all the Tom Seaver rookies and Carew rookies, bench rookies and Aaron or uh, Nolan Ryan rookies that you see, because there were multiple multiples of each of those. I, I distinctly remember that, but not thinking that was a big deal at the time as a 12 year old. So my regret is not being able to get even more cards out of that giant trash bag. So there you go, long response. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the story. We will catch you guys soon and Check out Chris's channel. In the meantime, keep collecting.